What kind of things live in the deepest parts of the ocean? The ocean is largely unexplored in detail. The depths are a source of mystery and wonder to this day. However, we have ventured to the deepest parts of the ocean many times to have a look around. The deepest part of the ocean is a point in the Mariana Trench known as the Challenger Deep. The bottom sits at a depth of around 10,920 meters, or 35,826 feet. That's 11 kilometers, or 6.8 miles deep. A quick history. The Challenger Deep is named after the first ship that discovered it, the Royal Navy HMS Challenger, during a scientific expedition in 1875. While depth sounding with a weighted rope, they discovered an area of the trench with a recorded depth of 5,663 fathoms, that's 8,184 meters or 26,850 feet deep. In 1957, another Royal Navy ship on a scientific expedition named the HMS Challenger II recorded the area with an echo sounder, discovering the true depths of the depression. Many more ships visited and studied the Challenger Deep with echo sounding, but it wasn't until the 23rd of January, 1960, that humans first dared to reach the basin in person. Diving the Depths New technology and deep-sea vehicles permitted the exploration of the deepest portions of the ocean. One such vehicle is known as a bathyscaphe, an improvement on the tried-and-trued bathysphere design. With a crew compartment hanging under a float filled with gasoline, a bathyscaphe can be viewed as an underwater blimp of sorts. The gasoline float provided buoyancy, but being a liquid was incompressible. The vehicle would sink thanks to heavy ballast. To ascend, the ballast is dropped, allowing for the vehicle to naturally float back up to the surface. The first bathyscaphe to explore the Challenger Deep was the bathyscaphe to Trieste, with Jacques Picard and Don Walsh on board. The dive took 4 hours and 47 minutes to reach the floor of the Challenger Deep Basin. During the dive, around 9,400 meters, or 30,839 feet, the two divers heard a loud bang shake through the vehicle. Both men looked around the cabin, but couldn't find what caused the noise. But they looked at each other, and decided to continue. Reasoning, the pressure was so strong outside that if something had failed critically, they would both be dead before they had any time to realize what went wrong. It was later found out that the plexiglass window in the flooded entrance tube had cracked. The crew was in no danger. The floor of the basin was described as being a diatomaceous ooze, with the Trieste kicking up a cloud of silt upon impact. They reported seeing flatfish, however this has been questioned, and Walsh later said this might have been inaccurate and a case of mistaken identity. Since the Trieste, there have only been a handful of other crewed missions to the Challenger Deep, each one giving us new insights and discoveries. What lives in the abyss? Media likes to paint the dark depths as a place of giant monsters, however this is the opposite of reality. With the ocean, life doesn't get bigger the deeper you go, it actually gets smaller. Energy and food is at a premium, so megafauna isn't able to survive unless it feeds in shallower waters. The first life forms discovered in Challenger Deep were microbes dredged up by the Challenger. The mystery creature observed by the Trieste has been speculated to have been a sea cucumber instead of a flatfish, as sea cucumbers have been found in later explorations. Among the animals observed have been scale worms, shrimp, and polychaete worms. Sea monsters in their own right, but not very big or grand. One recent mission even found the most depressing thing imaginable at the deepest point on Earth. A plastic bag. Unseen monsters? What else might lurk in the dark? We don't know. The oceans as a whole are very underexplored, and the Challenger Deep is no exception. Although I doubt ancient monsters live in the basin, all kinds of yet unknown life probably still lives down there. Out of sight, only to be discovered by a chance encounter during a future visit. Long-term subscribers will know my first love was the ocean. Before space and nuclear physics, it was the ocean. I still love the ocean, and the mysteries of its depth fill me with just as much wonder as the depths of the cosmos. What lurks in the darkest depths? I would sure love to find out, personally.